All the teachers, you always hear that we do not accept or reject the existence of God. But when they're accepting biology so freely and saying it's the only way, then, I mean, they might not directly be saying it, but indirectly, that's what they mean. Why are we so afraid about mentioning that there is a God if, in fact, about 80%, <clears throat> I would say, in the world believe there is a God? If you have a religion, and if, unless you're an atheist, which I'm sure is a small minority, then there is a God. You believe, hey, there's a higher being out there. Even and even if you're afraid to admit that, if you're afraid to admit that in class because, ooh, you'd be pressing on someone that there is a God, wouldn't you be just as afraid to press on someone there isn't a God? That, to me, is a scary world. It just shocks me that we could find all this information to su support special creation, mm -hmm. and they say there's none out there. It's like, where are you looking? Because I can, like, give you a book, you know, if you want to know. I don't know if this is an isolated incident of kids just becoming passionate about the situation or if this is actually the new creationist game plan uh, if you can't if you can't attack evolution uh, in the supreme court then maybe you can go around and pull one evolution weed at a time to get rid of it that's what i'm afraid of people actually don't understand the issues people are being told first you have to choose between faith and science. You have to choose between especially Christianity and evolution. They're being told, well, it's only fair to give both points of view. It's only fair to uh, teach evolution and balance it with creation science or intelligent design theory or something like that. From their tiny offices in a small northern California town, Eugenie Scott and the staff of the National Center for Science Education deploy an arsenal of weapons to defend the teaching of evolution. Hi, Jeannie. Often, the hardest part is just getting people to understand what is and what isn't science. Evolution or science in general can't say anything about whether God did or did not have anything to do with it. All evolution as a science can tell us is what happened. Can't tell us who done it. And as what happened, the evidence is extremely strong that the galaxies evolved, the planets evolved, the sun evolved, and living things on Earth shared common ancestors. You're probably right. At the National Center for Science Education, calls come in from across America from teachers who continue to be accused of locking God out of their classrooms. When Steve Randack called from Lafayette, Indiana, he got the help he wanted. But he was troubled by what he heard. This is Eugenie Scott. Eugenie Scott told me that this is the first time, to her knowledge, that students have taken the initiative. And I am very much concerned that there will be other places where children will step forward, uh, protest, uh, ask school boards to be listened to, and the school boards won't do the right thing. I think they think someone will come out a victor, and I don't believe that that's going to be the case. But win or lose, for McKinney students, this is a battle worth fighting. Tonight, they are taking their petitions to the Lafayette School Board to demand that the members take a public stand for or against spatial creation. They claim that complex biological structures could not have arisen through natural selection at all, but had to have been created by some higher intelligence. According to their teachers, the future of science education at Jefferson High may be riding on the board's response. As a teacher, you feel compelled to, to soothe the distress these kids are having. And so school boards are going to feel the same thing. Uh, Joyce, we can have a roll call, please. And that sense of fairness is something that school board members have and I think would respond to. And I think it's, I think it's going to be dangerous. Well, I call this meeting to order the Lafayette School Board of Trustees. First of all, welcome. I understand some of you are here tonight to discuss the science curriculum at uh, Jefferson High School, so let me see that show of hands of people that are there for that. Okay, thank you. Let's just move in. Uh, are there any uh, comments from the public? It's now open. All right. One issue that continues to confront American society is that of the teaching of the theories of evolution and special creation in our schools. The assumption of the theory of evolution is that all living things have resulted from chance interactions. The assumption of special creation is that the physical universe 
and living creatures in it have been fashioned by a supreme being. Please understand that those of us supporting this petition do not advocate the, te the banning of teaching of the theory of evolution. However, we believe that the theory of evolution should be taught alongside the alternative theory of special creation. Let us be taught the facts so that we can decide on our own. Thank you. For these students, the argument isn't about science versus the Bible. It's about which views of science will be taught. It is a tactic pioneered in 1961 when a revolutionary book by Henry Morris and John Whitcomb used carefully selected scientific evidence to support the creationist cause. The Genesis Flood is the foundational document for creation science. Everything else has been built upon this book. He makes uh, a number of claims in here that you can somehow find scientific evidence to demonstrate that the earth was created like a literal reading of Genesis says. The Genesis flood was an inspiration to creationists. In 1981, Louisiana Senator Bill Keith proposed a law requiring the teaching of creation science wherever evolution was taught. Scientific creationism is pure science and is just as unreligious as um, the teaching of evolution science. And also that, um, that it's an abridgment of academic freedom for our school children not to be given all the scientific evidences regarding origins. Over opposition from educators, the Louisiana legislature passed the law. Creation science and evolution became classmates. But in 1987, the Supreme Court ruled that teaching creationism alongside evolution violated the First Amendment separation of church and state. In his opinion for the majority, however, Justice William Brennan wrote that alternatives to evolutionary theory can be taught if they have a scientific basis. What Justice Brennan wrote in the 1987 decision was that, of course, teachers have a right to teach any and all um, uh, scientific views about the origin of humans or any other scientific theory. And that's absolutely true. And what he said was, any and all scientific views. Now, of course, one reason why the creationists have worked so hard to try to present their ideas as being scientific is so they can duck under the First Amendment. And I would just like to tell all of you how we want special creation to be taught. And like it's already been stated, we want it taught alongside evolution. I would just like to say that we do not want a religion class or any separate class because it is not religion. So we, we're just begging of you to teach us the facts and let us decide. And that is with evolution and special creation. There's a large part of me that felt, my gosh, we haven't done a very good job with the nature of science if we have this many students who don't understand the difference and why creation and you know any supreme being can't be addressed in a science classroom and I kept thinking gee it seems like we try so hard to to really hit home with what makes a particular event science and the fact that there seems to be a lack of understanding about that was disturbing to me what they don't understand is that science is a rather brutal competition of ideas. It is not particularly a, a situation where you get to express your idea just because you want to. That sense of fairness doesn't exist in science. In science, ideas are supported by evidence, and that evidence has to be peer-reviewed, and it has to be repeatable, and it has to be testable, and creationism is not that. And we know that it's our freedom to decide on the information and we think that it's been neglected by the school system in the state and maybe even in the nation that there are facts we don't have. Thank you.